Alright, hey guys, welcome to another edition of Mob Rules Presents Danny's Hot, ki hot Takes, Hot yeah. Cakes, one of the two, whichever. Yeah, who cares? It's, it's, it's something. It's one of those things. That's the key, right? Yeah. Um, so today we're going to be doing a tower review of the Psychic Awakening, the Greater Good book. I'm joined, of course, uh, by Dave. Yep. And special guest, John. Yes. Yeah. So I, like, I like being special. <laughs> yeah, you are special. <laughs> not just to your mom, but to us too. Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's not an insult. I'll take it. Those are, <laughs> those are worse. factual. Yeah. Um, interesting. So, yes, yeah, so we're going to be uh, starting off. We're going to review the Tao stuff here today. Um, man, Tao got a lot of cool stuff in this book. I'm I don't believe you, because I haven't been able to see the book yet, because you stole it from me the minute we got it. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I tend to do that to you quite often. Factual and statements. <laughs> literally every time. Um, so, yeah, so we're going to be reviewing this, so uh, let's take a peek again. Uh, we are not going to be going over the fluff today. We're just going to be looking at the rules, and also we're going to be doing some random name generation as well. Oh, can I just say, Danny, that I, how stoked I am that they put the name generator oh, at the front. right at the start. It's the thing yeah, everybody just, clamors for. Let's just get let's it get right into it. It is my absolute favorite. So, uh, yeah, this name generator is, a, well, first of all, uh, let's go over what what we're going to be reviewing today. So we're going to be reviewing the Tau rules. We've got the name generator. We've got a new data slate for uh, Commander Shadow Sun. Uh, we have new custom set tenants. So if you want to make your yeah, dude, this is happening. So if you want to make your sept other than something other than the Tau Sept, yeah, uh, <laughs> you can. Uh, also, new prototype weapon systems, and believe me, this is the hotness. This is going to be the new thing. Yep. Um, as well as some new stratagems, really good ones in here, and and then finally we'll round it out with a review of the eight, and the new Farsight Enclaves rules, and they have their own stuff. So lots of stuff to go over today in this tower view. We're going to be uh, nailing it all. Mm, just like no, yep. let okay, cool. We'll do it. <laughs> the uh, YouTube algorithm. No, <laughs> <don't make> joke. <laughs> All right. Um, so, if you want to generate a name for your town commander, you absolutely can. Um, you can choose uh, his cast, his rank. Uh, and then a sept, and it allows you to com combine those all together to make uh, one badass name for your guy. Dave, what's your what's your uh, what's your name? Oh, I don't Number, know. between 1 and 60, 11 and 66. Oh, well, it's obviously, it's 44. 44, good choice. Uh, you are Watana. Damn right. I, I love that Disney be princess. Watana <laughs> Wana. That's a warrior. Ooh. That's like a basic fire warrior, because that would Ooh. be you. Uh, All right, so <laughs> this... <laughs> Did you just hype up how you can make your own commander and then instantly demote him to fire warrior? <laughs> Sure did, John. Sure did. Love it. Yep. All right. So, join uh, the Lord's podcast. <laughs> no, they won't have you either. <laughs> uh, so we're going to start with uh, Commander Shadow Sun today. Um, her new data sheet. Uh, not a ton changes. She gets one less drone, I believe, because she had two uh, prototype shield drones before, and now she just has the one. Well, now she um, has an advanced guardian drone. Right, which is a little bit different. Yeah. Um, and then she's got uh, new guns, which they did preview on the GW website as well. Um, her new guns, of course, you can choose whether she has dispersed fusion blasters or the high energy fusion blaster. Either one, uh, you get. Uh, you can have two of one, uh, one of or one. one of each. Yeah. Yep. And then she also gets a light missile pod, uh, and uh, gets uh, a flechette bla launcher and a pulse pistol. So she has six pistol attacks in close combat. That's kind of cool. Yeah, it is. Uh, and, I mean, one is a good pistol, and one is just kind of like, hopefully I can kill some guardsmen or cultists or... For whatever. sure. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, a pistol five is pretty rad, even I, though I it's mean, only strength three. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's just a ton of shots. You're going to clear some chaff for sure. For real. Um, and so, uh, if you have... So she kept a lot of the same stuff. Genius of the Kion. Command Link Drone is the same. Um, uh, has the Camouflage Fields rule, which is great. Um, she does get a 5 up invul save. I don't think she had that before, which is nice. Um, and then invul save, and then a rule for Supreme Commander, which I thought was good. Um, oh, also Defender of the Greater Good is a rule that she had as well, where, she, uh, the battle, where stealth suits can take hits for. Um, the Supreme Commander one uh, allows you to uh, take her in a detachment that's not Tau Sept, and, still, and it doesn't detract from the other benefits that she gets. So you could throw her in a Farsight Enclaves detachment if you want to. Basically, it's like having a, being able to have... A, Pharaohs in a Raven Guard without losing your doctorate. Without losing Raven Guard, right? Yeah. She doesn't get Tau Sept benefits, but that's okay. 
Um, and then the command, the command link drone, uh, again, stay the same. Uh, and then the advanced guardian drone is a four, has a four plus invul save instead of the three up invul saves that the other ones have. Um, but it does give a bubble of uh, uh, six up feel no pain within three inches yeah. from, for individual models, which is kind of cool. So you can give that to like uh, gun drones if you want to to make them kind of like uh, shield drones. If well, they it's just a, it's just an aura, so. You know, if you're within three inches of it, you just get it. you just get it. It's kind of nice. You don't have to give it to them. Sure, right. So, yeah. So still good. Um, one thing that I didn't see on here, and maybe I missed it. Um, I don't remember seeing any points for her. I don't remember seeing it either. Uh, so I think that they probably uh, like, just forgot to put it in. Yeah. Uh, like Lazarus. Well, it was probably supposed Which to be fine. at the beginning where they slotted in the name generator. So Just copy paste it over the points. That's right. okay. Uh, at nine power level, I would assume somewhere around 180 points for her and her drones. Uh, okay. That's what I would say. I mean, that feels a little high, but uh, but then I haven't seen her on the table, and so I don't know. She's uh, like a ubiquitous model, uh, has really powerful abilities. Um, I, I, think, I think that's probably a fair points cost for her. Um, maybe it'll be a little bit cheaper. Um, so custom sept tenants. Man, there are some cool ones in here. I really like some of these. Yeah. Um, so there's not a ton of them. There's only two pages of custom subtenants. Um, so uh, just to start off, uh, you've got turbo jets, which allow you to add one to the advanced rolls of jetpack units and two inches of the move characteristic of jet jetpack models with this tenant. Um, so this makes all your battle suits like movement 10. Um, it can make your uh, uh, cold star commanders like movement 22. Yikes. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so that gives you some cool abilities. Pretty nice. Makes your guys a lot faster. Uh, dedication to the cause, plus one leadership to models this tenant. Eh, probably not great. No. Um, Soldiers in Arms is a pretty good one. Uh, increase the range for the, for the greater good ability to nine inches. Um, so, and remember that you're going to get two of these, so you can pick two of them and select them, just like uh, most of the other ones. Yeah. Uh, uh, so that increases your greater good aura to nine inches. So nine inches can lend Overwatch to you, which is a pretty powerful ability. It yeah. stops them being all like balled up in just one area. Yeah, so. they, you, I mean, nine inches is a big aura from like a unit of like ten fire warriors. That's yeah, pretty cool. I mean, nine inches is big, so <laughs> it's it is. usually usually well regarded. Yeah, <laughs> mess with the algorithm. <laughs> uh, then you have stabilization systems. This is probably one of the most powerful ones in here. If you have the battlesuit keyword, you don't you don't suffer the penalty for moving and firing heavy weapons. So this Super takes good. yeah this yeah. takes the place of one of the specialist war gear items that you get the. Uh, uh, I think it's the target lock, and it gives you, basically, you can move and shoot without penalty uh, yeah. for heavy weapons. But, so, you, so this frees up a whole slot if you want to uh, for something different. Pretty nice. Hooray! Yep. Uh, then you've got Hardened Warheads. Uh, this is my personal favorite one out of all of them because I love missiles. Missiles are my favorite weapon in Tau. Like, if I could just take an all-missile Tau army, I would do that. In you can. Tau. Yeah. I, I mean, you could, I guess, but I, <laughs> you're not going to win. It wouldn't be good, but yeah. you can do it. You could yeah. do it. <laughs> anyway, this uh, whenever you attack with a high yield missile pod, missile pod, seeker missile, or smart missile system, uh, you get an extra AP minus one. Um, so you can use this with the uh, uh, advanced targeting matrix, I think is what it is, and that gives a uh, an extra minus one AP to your to your shots. So you could have minus two AP on high yield missile pods, um, or re or regular missile pods. Um, or minus two on smart missile systems is really good. Oh, I'm sorry. It'd be minus three on the high yield missile pods and missile pods. That's cool. Yeah, that sounds very good. That's very good. Uh, then you have sophisticated comms net. I like this one too because this kind of could make a really good vehicle army. Um, when resolving an attack made by a vehicle with this tenant against a unit that has one or more marker like counters, we roll two and rolls of one. So if you combo this up with like the Sasea uh, stratagem where you can shoot one unit and then spread a marker light to every other unit within six, you can really spread out your marker lights so you get reroll ones to wound on all of your tanks, which is pretty cool. So it's pretty nice. I could see this comboing up with hardened warheads pretty well if you give your tanks smart missile systems so they get to reroll ones to wound against all that stuff. That seems pretty good. Yeah, it seems, it seems very good. Yep. Uh, hybridized weaponry gives four inch range to assault and grenade weapons. Uh, this is cool because it increases the range of stuff like uh, uh, the uh, like missile pods, for instance, will increase them to forty inch range. I, I see a theme. if you want to, or burst cannons go to go to twenty two inches, which is really far, actually. I yeah. Think. Um, so that seems super solid, uh, and you can throw like a uh, one of the little uh, like they've got the uh, God, what are they called? Uh, they're like the iron grenades or whatever that the that the Tau the normal guys have. 
um, that give you uh, like a, a penalty to hit in close combat and stuff. Really good. That's a standard Tau piece of war gear. Um, yeah. I just I forgot what the grenade is called, but it's something that they all have. Um, then you have gifted pilots. Um, if in your movement phase a vehicle or monster unit model with this tenant does not move or moves a distance less than half its move characteristic until the end of the turn when resolving an attack with a ranged weapon, you can reroll a two and roll of one. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, yep. Uh, so if you're if you're not moving super far, you get to just reroll two wound rolls of one. Very very solid. Very good. Um, and that's also vehicle or monster. Um, so that's like the big battle suits. I believe the Riptide is a no Riptide is a battle suit. I was gonna say uh, Talmar is a monster, isn't it? It is. Yeah. So uh, no, yes, I think it's a monster and a battle suit. Um, I know it's a I know it's a battle suit for sure because you can drone drone to it. Um, right. But I was gonna say the. Uh, Oh, God, what is that thing called with the, uh, why am I blanking on the name of this thing? I don't remember. It's the, it's the thing nobody takes with the open-topped, uh, John, what oh, was that thing devil, I stomped you out with? Fish? The, remember in that tournament? Oh, the Storm Surge. <laughs> storm Surge, that's yeah. the one. Thank I you. always remember things you beat me with. <laughs> <laughs> so in 7th edition, yeah. that thing had Stomp, which was really dumb. Anyway, uh, so this will give that thing, because that thing is a monster and not a battle suit. Um, oh, it's a vehicle to it. Anyway, uh, advanced power cells give your tactical drones movement 10. I don't think that's very good. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't sound good, It doesn't good, sound but... super good. Uh, maneuvering thrusters, the battle scene unit can advance when it falls back. That is awesome, actually. Yikes. Because you can, like... So that gives 8 plus D6, so you can move that far out of combat. Um, super solid. And then uh, upgunned, I like this one as well. Whenever you uh, shoot a burst cannon, you get an extra minus 1 AP. That seems, I mean, that seems really good. I mean, it's a trick. Anytime you can get extra AP, you know, it helps you take out those vicious, vicious iron hands that are busy rocking around. So. Yeah, so again, you can have AP minus two uh, yeah. uh, burst cannons, which is pretty rad. All right, so this is the hotness, I feel like, in this particular, in this particular book, uh, the prototype weapon systems. These affect entire units that are equipped with these things. So, so one thing that I read on this, and I'm not sure maybe this will get FAQ'd in the future, um, the prototype weapons are like a relic, so you can get these instead of a relic, right? Okay. But I don't think that you can buy them with the stratagem that gives you extra relics. So you can, I think you can only have one of these in your list ever. And I don't know if that's true or if that'll be fact so that they're like, uh, uh, that they're like the, not prototype weapons, but the, uh, uh, the signature systems. I, maybe they will be, but as far as I can tell right now, you only get one of these. But there are, man, are there some cool ones in here. Uh, so reactive countermeasures. So it gives, so battle suit model with the air bursting fragmentation projector only. Um, ranged weapons with an armor penetration of minus one or minus two are, don't count for anything and they count as zero. So he like shoots the weapon at like incoming munitions and it like destroys them. So that's a really cool ability and can really increase the, the toughness of a crisis suit unit by a lot. Yeah, I mean, anytime, again, another trend that we're seeing for some of this Psychic Awakening stuff is the negating um, minus one and minus two. Right, AP. which is interesting considering how much of that is, is available in the Marine Codex, right? Right. Like, that's kind of one of the signatures that they have for everything is AP minus one or even minus two on a lot of different stuff. Yeah, uh, it's, that's a very powerful, powerful oh, thing right sure. there. Oh, for sure. Uh, fusion Obliterator, cool weapon. Um, so instead of a Fusion Collider on a Ghost Keel, you get this. Uh, it's Heavy 3, uh, Strength 9, minus 4, D6 damage. Strength 9 being a key, because that means Toughness 8 stuff, it's wounded on 3s, and that's a big deal. Um, and uh, it gets the Melter Rule, so when you're within half range, you roll an extra D6 and discard the lowest. Yeah. Um, so pretty cool. Uh, then you have the Advanced EM Scrambler, which means you can't set up reinforcements within 12 inches of a model with this. A uh, very powerful ability, like makes you can't deep strike that stuff, and that's only on a ghost keel. Uh, then they have the high uh, capacitance railgun, uh, which is for hammerheads. So this is interesting because nobody takes railheads anymore, right? Mm -hmm. They yeah. always take the ion cannon railhead or uh, 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 the hammerhead, right? So this might make you take one. Um, it's pretty good. Uh, so the solid shot becomes heavy too, which is very which is very nice, right? Yep. Uh, and then the sub munitions is 43. I thought that was really good. Like 43 shots is pretty cool. That's like eight shots with sub munitions. So you have some. Yeah, it's strength uh, six, minus one. That's yeah. That's really good. That's pretty solid. Yeah. And then, uh, with, if you're using the solid shot profile, if you roll a wound roll of six or better, you do D3 mortal wounds. 
in addition to other damage. Which we've seen with some of the earlier stuff, you can get bonuses to your wound roll that Correct. make that yep. easier. Right. So re that's really cool. Yeah. Um, the Gatling Burst Cannon. Love this. I would love to see a giant squad, uh, and we'll get to this later, but at Farsight Enclaves with these things. Um, so it turns all of your uh, Burst Cannons um, into this. Basically, anytime you roll a 6 to hit, you get an extra hit. Um, it's the same stats as a normal burst cannon, so assault four, strength five, no AP, one damage. But if you take three burst cannons on every single one of your crisis suit models, they get twelve shots each, and then you have nine of those potentially in a unit. <laughs> so, <laughs> and it's cheap because burst cannons are Sorry. cheap now with chapter approved. Did you say nine models with twelve shots each? Correct. It's a hundred and eight shots day. Okay. Yep. And you can do. Uh, uh, you can also potentially make them ballistic skill two plus fairly easily, and give them marker light so they're rerolling ones, and maybe ignoring cover, a bunch of other stuff. So there's a, a lot of rad options that you have there. And rather probably about twenty extra hits off. Yeah. Of the, right. That, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so then uh, network marker lights is cool. So this is for uh, a Pathfinder unit. The whole Pathfinder unit gets an extra six inches on their marker lights because they go from 30 to 36. And they become assault weapons. So they can move and shoot them without penalty. Oh, that's nice. That's really good. That's very strong. Yep. Um, the Annihilation Warheads is for a Storm, storm Surge. I really like this one. So destroyer missiles normally do D3 mortal wounds if you hit with them. Right. This makes so all the destroyers do flat three. And it has four destroyer missiles. So if you boost it up to hit on twos, which is quite possible, right? Um, it could be doing twelve mortal wounds to something with its destroyer missiles. Just like, just die, please, just die. Are they are uh, the the missiles? Are they destroyer missiles? Are they one shot. They're one shot only. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank God. But Oof. yeah, isn't that? Oof. I mean, that's powerful. Um, when you I just absolutely one hundred percent have to kill something. Oh yeah, okay, it's photon grenades. That's what I was talking about earlier. So the accelerated photon grenades is for a unit with photon grenades. Um, so range 12 inches, that's a, that's a long range for a grenade. That's a big grenade. Yep. And it's a it's muscly fish man. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> for the greater gun! So I assume that they have little rockets on them, so they throw them and then they like burst and <laughs> go a little bit further. Because well, uh, they're accelerated. They just can't be yeah. guys that Still are just really good at practice. They, all they've done is practice throwing for their entire right. lives. Yeah. Just they put really all the shot putters They got there. one big super thick arm. like. Yeah. like <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. They've just been throwing grenades with that arm. He's more <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what that is. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> anyway. Um, you can only target infantry units with it. Um, if you hit, uh, don't make a wound roll. Instead, the unit gets shocked. And if a unit is shocked, uh, they are minus one to hit with melee weapons, and they cannot advance and have any any charge rolls. That's oh, pretty cool. They're like a uh, baby baby, like baby thunderfires. Thunder yeah, baby tremor shells. Muscly uh, single muscly arm thunderfire cannons. There you go. Right. Uh, Crosslink stabilizer jets. Another awesome another awesome addition to a unit of crisis suits. Right. So it affects all the crisis suit units in a unit. When resolving an attack made by a ranged weapon, reroll to hit and to wound rolls of one. That is so good. Wow. That's really good. I mean, yeah. So it would be hard for me to choose between uh, these two if I was going to take uh, them on a big unit of cross, uh, crisis suits. So what, what is the, uh, the, ga the regular burst cannon? Uh, are the burst cannons assault four? Yep. It's yep. the same flat? Yeah. So they have four. So it's, it's just if you want extra hits or not. Man, that's... God, that's but a, then you could that's the a thing toss was, up because you got you have extra hits, or you get to reroll ones and ones. Sure, sure. Uh, then that's fair. Um, the crosslink stabilizer jets I think are good on units that don't have burst cannons. Probably. So you could stick them on like plasma rifles or well, plasma rifles are really bad. Um, but like uh, uh, cyclic ion blasters would be a good choice for this, mm. um, uh, or missile pods. So you could take a bunch of missile pods and give them this, so they reroll into hit rolls of yeah. Anyway, oh, uh, so that's solid. Uh, then you have the Magna Rail Rifle. Man, this thing is cool. So this affects all the broadsides in the unit, and that's it gives them an extra pip of strength on these things. So they're heavy two strength nine minus four d six damage, and six pluses to wound are an, a mortal wound in addition, and minimum three damage, which is that's so good. Like. A whole unit, so you get six shots of this for this one relic, right? Like, that's awesome. Uh, the Amplified Ion Accelerator on the Riptide 
is really cool. Um, so this one, uh, and I'm not sure, did they preview this on the GW uh, the website? I don't think that they did, um, but I'm not 100% sure. Do either of you guys know? I do not. I okay. do not. And that's fine. But, um, so what this does is it makes your, uh, first of all, um, I know that the overcharge on the, on the uh, amplified on accelerator is different in this, in that it's uh, flat six instead of, uh, uh, instead of D6, which is super good. Uh, yeah, it's heavy D6 on the normal version of this weapon, instead of just flat six shots. That's rad, right? That's a super good benefit right off the bat. And it goes from uh, strength eight, it's an extra minus one AP and flat three damage instead of D3, and goes from uh, strength, so it's still strength nine, but it gets an extra AP, and instead of flat three, it's three plus D3. Uh, so it does give you a mortal wound for every one you roll, but like you can reroll those with one marker light. Mm -hmm. So that's not so bad. But that's uh, that's super powerful. That's almost worth taking an ion cannon on your rails on your uh, uh, on your riptides, which is pretty good. And the final thing they have on here is high powered incinerators, um, and this is for a battle suit unit only. So you replace all the flamers with this weapon. Um, so it has a standard flamer profile, but uh, and it auto hits, of course, just like a flamer does. Uh, if you're within half range, get plus one strength. So they all become heavy flamers. Oh, nice. Which is cool. Like, especially if you can deep strike a, like a, a, a unit down. Yeah. Um, this combos up really well with the hybridized weaponry trait. So you get plus four inches on the range of assault weapons. Mm -hmm. So then that makes your flamers uh, 12 inch range. So you can deep strike in and flamer somebody with like, you know, I mean, you could potentially get 27 flamers. That's really good. And, deep, and, and nail something. Pretty cool, right? So, battle suits seem to be the big winner from these, these systems Great. here. Great! That's what I want to see, man. I um, want to see more battle suits on the table. And, like, I love a relic that affects an entire unit. I think that is the coolest thing. Yeah. It's just like the Tyranids, or very close to the Tyranids' abilities, right? That allows yes. them to do that. I mean, except these were way better, but... Well, it the seems to be ones are good, though. where they went is they're going for things they want to see more of on the table. To, to allow you to and customize a whole unit. Yeah, yeah. and I love you, that. And you yeah. aren't necessarily seeing on the table, like with the Hammerhead gunship, um, yep. with some of the battle suit stuff. The ion cannon on the, 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 on the ion website, cannon. which you never see anymore. Right. And it seems to be really like, for, for me anyway, looking at this, like prototype weapon systems is where you would start your list design. Yeah. So be like, totally. I want to make a unit yeah. to build this around. Yep. Which I love. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we got, uh, uh, let's see, 15 different new stratagems for Tau. Uh, there's some really good ones in here, too, I think. Um, so you've got uh, Swarm Bodyguards. Uh, this is pretty cool. So if you're within three inches of a character mo a unit and you're a unit of Crisis Bodyguards, you get to reroll to hit and to wound rolls in close combat. So this is kind of cool because uh, those guys are normally uh, a five plus ballistic or five plus weapon skill. Mm -hmm. And getting full rerolls on all their attacks, because they're like four attacks apiece at strength five. Like, is not bad. Mm -hmm. And if you have a, a advanced target, a target matrix, I believe, the extra AP minus one, that right. also affects your close combat weapons. So they have minus one AP close combat weapons, which is kind of cool. I, I, like, it's yeah. not bad. And this is great with far side enclaves. Because then you're going to get to, uh, like, your, like, there's a bunch of extra stuff that you can get for them to make them even better in combat. Uh, you've got aerial targeting. Um, so you pick a unit at the start of the shooting phase. Oh no, it's not even at the start, it's just during the shooting phase. Um, you can uh, you automatically count a unit as having one marker light against them. That's... Or one more marker light than they would normally have. Ugh, I love marker lights so much. So like just being able to pick a unit that you're gonna shoot marker lights at anyway and just get to reroll once on them, pretty solid. Mm -hmm. Pretty solid. Yeah. And at a minimum, of, that's what it is. And a lot of times playing against Tau, sometimes you're fishing for that fifth marker line. Mm -hmm. So here for one for the CP, one to hit. Right. You're, you're getting that right away. And if you fail, like you uh, you hit with a bunch, but you don't just get quite enough, you can be like, all right, boom, one more marker light hit on that unit. Yeah. Nice. Got it. All right. They've got deadly aim. So this one is for sniper drones. Sniper drones were a lot more popular a little bit earlier in the edition, like maybe uh, 12 months ago or so. Like they were a little right. bit, they were a little bit more popular. Um, but this makes them decently good. Um, so it gives them an extra AP on their on their sniper weapons. So they go from AP zero to AP minus one. And if they're within half range, they get an extra AP minus one on their shots. So they're AP minus two. Nice. Um, they have a really good range. So they have like a four. They have like a thirty six inch range, I believe. Um, so they are uh, 
let's see, they're pulse rifles. Uh, hold on, I'm pulling up my little thing here. Um, anyway, the algorithm. The algorithm, Dave. Don't laugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the nice thing, the nice thing about those is that they uh, uh, is that they can shoot characters, and any six pluses they roll to hit uh, or six pluses to wound do a mortal wound, just like you would expect with a sniper rifle weapon, right? Yeah. Um, but you can get a crazy far rapid fire range with them, which is in half range. So pretty cool there. Um, you've got Wisdom of the Many. Um, so this is for an ethereal. You get to use an extra invocation of the elements that turn. So you can use like uh, Strength of Stone and one of the other ones. So like to get the six up, feel no pain on a whole bubble of units. And then also like reroll ones to hit if they don't move, which is pretty cool. Nice. Uh, Pulse Onslaught is for Breachers. So this is the second one that breached the second stratagem that's specifically for Breachers in the Tau book. Uh, the other one lets you reroll to wound rolls if you're in half range. Uh, but this one makes your close range and medium range 15 inches instead of just like four inches, which is the close. So they get their shotguns go out to 15 and there's like strength six minus two AP. Yikes. So at 15 inches, you can unload with 20 of those shots. That's kind of cool. There's like, there might be play there, especially if you dump them out of a devil fish or something like that. That's I could see for some... one CP. Yeah, yeah that's not that's bad. cheap. I'm seeing a lot of cheap CP here. Oh, oh yeah, there's none of these cost more than two. The, that's the maximum they're going to cost. Um, so modulated weaponry. Uh, this preview this one. So this one lets you pick uh, a unit that has a variable weapon shots and just get auto max shots. So on the uh, what is it? The Yavara has that flamer that's three d six shots at strength six minus two three flat damage. Mm -hmm. Getting eighteen hits. Yeah, is pretty nasty. So that's kind of the combo with that one. Although there's some other stuff that, that is, that's, that's decent on as well. Uh, Reign of Fire is for Vesped Stingwings for 1 CP. If they deep strike, you get to reroll the to hit roll. So that's pretty cool. Nice. Yeah. I don't even know what a Vesped sure Stingwing is. The three people who run them are very <laughs> excited about that. Well, maybe right they're now. legit now yeah. with the points drops that they got in chapter approved and stuff like that. I think they're probably not that's terrible. What that's what I'm saying. And it's a cheap unit that gets to deep strike for free, so that's something. All right, so you've got coordinated engagement. Uh, this one they previewed as well. Two CP. Uh, you pick a unit of crisis suits or crisis bodyguards, and they count as having. Uh, uh, and you pick an enemy unit, and you count that them as having five marker lights against them. That <laughs> sweet Jesus. So plus one to hit, reroll once to hit, no cover saves, don't count as moving. Um, pretty rad. Uh, you've got ambushing predators. So there's, by the way, there are one, two, three, three. four different crew stratagems in this. Four. Yep. What is a crew? So a crew <laughs> is a it's a troops unit that you may may or may not see. Anyway, I remember it from sixth edition. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they were still in fifth. So ambushing predators Seven. gives you a six inch heroic intervention on crew units during your opponent's charge phase. Uh, you know that's actually that's kind of cool, right? That's actually yeah. kind of cool. Yeah. So it allows them to just get to get stuck in if you want to make a bunch of free attacks. Because if you screen with crew and you have your nine inch greater good. Yep. Well, crew, you don't get to greater good. Well, well yeah, but if you greater good with your tau and right. then you charge in and then you're going to be locked up with crew while your tau suits fly away. And, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's some stuff there. Yeah. Uh, so that's okay. Um, you've got Seasoned Sniper. So this is the Firesight Marksman. This is the guy that helps out the Sniper Drones, but he's taken a lot because he's a cheap Elise choice that has a Ballistic Scale 3 plus Marker Light, yep. which is good. Uh, but this lets him Marker Light a character. So this is really cool, actually, in that you use this, and then you pop the Network Marker Light Stratagem so that they get uh, you get 1 plus D3 Marker Lights on that character. So if you have other Sniper units, you can really nail that character. Just I think that's a pretty cool ability. Just get right up on them there. Yep. Uh, then you've got Hidden Hunters. So this is for a crew unit. Um, you use it at the start of your uh, opponent's shooting phase. You select a crew unit. And then if you attack them with a the ranged weapon, uh, as long as that crew unit has cover, they get they get minus one to hit and plus one save. So that's cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, pack Alpha. Uh, so you use this on a crew shaper. And this is uh, before the battle starts. Um, so this is like a whole game stratagem. So this is like a, an upgrade for the shaper. Um, you get to uh, roll an extra d6 and discard one for advanced rolls for crew units. So this is going to push you up the table a lot further. Yeah. Especially if you have stuff like crew hounds or stuff like that that you really want to shoot up the table. Um, that's pretty good. Uh, you've got Raging Beasts. So this is for crew tox riders. Have you guys ever seen one of those in 8th edition? Because I have not. I've never seen one in 8th edition. I've I know what the model is. I, don't, yeah. I think crew it's, haven't seen I a lot of one was right. the, 
I, I feel like it was a Forge World model, but I mean, you're thinking of maybe the. Uh, uh, Oh man, what were those things? Anyway, yeah, there was a different unit that had like crew riders on them that had little that had big rifles mounted on the back, and they were like cavalry. Yeah, um, uh, I forgot what those things so were are, called. Anyway, this is something are these different. ones that are on the dinosaur, not the dinosaurs, the velociraptors, like, kind of. Right? No, these guys look like gorillas. Oh, okay. Um, anyway, so it makes the crew talks all have attacks four, and they get uh, AP two on their close combat weapons, which is. I mean, that makes them into okay counter assault units, I guess. Like, they're not bad. I mean, that's a lot of attacks. I mean, and it's only one CP, so if you yep. are that one guy still running them in 8th edition, right. you just... Your world just got blown. <laughs> Mind blown. Right. <laughs> exactly. So, and I think that they're... Uh, sorry, so they're AP minus 2, and I think that they're 2 damage flat each already on their close combat attacks, which is kind of cool. Uh, then you have point blank volley. Um, so this lets you turn, uh, pulse blasters, pulse carbines, and pulse rifles, uh, into pistol two weapons. And again, a common theme we're seeing is having the ability to still shoot in close combat without falling back. So your breachers, you can make them all strength six minus two AP pistol weapons in close combat. Which I thought was legit. That's cool. Um, and then finally you have Promising Pupil, and this lets you give an extra Warlord trait to a guy that you don't have. That, so it gives, allows you to have an extra character with a Warlord trait if you want one. Right. Which is good. Yep. Standard theme. Still good, Still great for Tau to have that. Oh, yeah, for sure. A lot of these stratagems... Yeah, let's talk about them. Um, so, no, no you're good. good, you're good. A lot of the stratagems, a lot of the uh, prototype weapon systems seem to be about negating dice for Tau. Sure. Um, so whether it's the... the um, Riptide weapon, where it's just a flat six. Yep. Or the stratagem to just max out your weapon thing. If you can kind of combine those two, you're taking dice out of two of your units and just kind of getting max shots. One of the most powerful themes in 40k ever is taking out randomness. So making sure that your dice rolls are already pre-maximized is, is extremely powerful. Using like seasoned snipers, so if you know you're going to kill that blocking unit. Right. And then you already have your, you know, max sniper light or the marker lights behind it there. A hundred percent. Um. Yeah. It's just a lot of taking randomness out. And yep. I, I think it speaks to the flavor of the army that they're prepared and planned for right. like these kind of things here. So some great strategies. They could be the yeah. Batman of 40K, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, Bat right. Batman's the Batman of 40K. So that's the Night Hunter, right? We all know yeah. that. All right, so we have the eight. Um, the eight are interesting. Um, so if you take the eight, it's 1,200, and t it's 1,120 points. Um, but you get uh, all of these different uh, crisis commanders and also a broadside commander. Um, they're all characters. You get a bunch of extra drones. Um, it kind of goes over what, how to use them. Uh, there's still minus three command points in the super heavy auxiliary, which is what they take up. Um, and the reason, so you might think, well, why are they minus three command points? These guys come with, I think, like four or five extra relics that you get effectively yeah. in here. So... Take that into consideration when you're thinking about it. The other disadvantage as well is that you cannot buy any other signature systems. So that's something to think about. So you won't get any experimental weapons if you do take the eight. Um, this also kind of bypasses the commander rule. Um, and we'll talk about uh, far side enclaves and commanders in a little bit. But um, you get a special uh, 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 warlord trait for far sight where he gets a six inch heroic intervention. And he gets to reroll to hit rolls if he charges or heroically intervenes. Or is charged. Now, Danny, in your uh, estimation, is there is there any real change in this data, these data sheets here, and the information not that since? I can not that I can tell. Um, I really like uh, some of the stuff is cool. It's not amazing. Uh, they're probably a really fun unit to play with on the table, like uh, not unit, but Fluffy. it's like it's it's probably it's probably I mean it's it's fun to throw on the table. Yeah. For sure. It's, it's a shame that it's so much because you could have, you know, easily been able to put the eight in like a doubles tournament, you know, but it's... For sure. It's, it's too, just barely well, too much. At the same time, much. you have eight really good characters. Yep. Yep. 14 yep. drones. It's... It's a lot. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, no. It's a it's a big oomph. So, so yeah. So, check them out. Um, they're still very good. All right. Um, so, let's see. Uh... Then we have Forces of the Enclave. So I was, first of all, surprised to see this, right? I was not expecting Farsight Enclaves to get their own little supplement in here. It's like a mini supplement. Um, so you get this new ability. Uh, all Farsight Enclaves gain the aggressive footing ability. When resolving an attack made by a model in this unit against an enemy unit within 12 inches, 
you count as having one more marker life than you normally would. I think that's so cool. Mm -hmm. Like it may, it forces you to be super aggressive with these guys. So they get up in people's faces and they sh and they shoot you because their step tenant is already. They get to reroll ones to wound within six. So you want to be close anyway. The other cool thing that they get is the commander's roll. And this is that you can include no more than two Farsight Enclave's commander units in each detachment. This is a big change for Tau because Tau have been very limited by the number of commanders that they can bring at any one time. In, because in you can, army wise? Yeah. Well, okay. they have a rule in their codex that say you can only bring one commander per detachment. So now Farsight Enclave's can bring two commanders. And the commanders are by far the best shooting unit available to Tau. Because they have all the best weapons and they're all ballistic skill 2+. plus. So giving a bunch of extra commanders the ability to take a bunch of extra commanders. Like you could take six Enforcer commanders or three Enforcer commanders. And you can take three Cold Star commanders. Oh yeah, you're right. Cold Star commanders are the ones that we're, we're seeing major play in top Tau lists. Right, right. Right, so that's a, so that's definitely an option that you. Oh, can do. that's great! I'm so so glad to hear that. <laughs> well, a lot of people complained about that, and I get it, especially with the rule of three, because like nobody wants to play against like ten commanders, right? But six is probably a little bit more manageable, and more fun for the person playing Tau for sure, because commanders are really cool and they get they get shit done. We, uh, um, I mean, do, is there anything in here for stealth suits though? What I want to know is, are stealth suits still Gucci? Now, you could take those upgraded burst cannons on your stealth suit unit if you oh, want to. So stealth suits not only are still Gucci, but potentially more Gucci? More Gucci. Oh, shoot. Yeah, watch out. You heard it here. All right, so you can take the veteran cadre uh, stratagem. This is probably the coolest stratagem to me of all of these. And this lets you make a unit of battle suits or, or, or bodyguards. Um, if you have three models, it only costs one. If you have four or more, then it costs two. It basically upgrades their weapon skill to 4-up and their ballistic skill to 3+. plus. That's awesome, huh. I think. Like, that's a big deal. That's a, I know people complain about Crisis Suits not having a 3-plus ballistic skill an awful lot. Um, or at least that's a common complaint that I hear. Um, and being able to make them weapons or ballistic skill 3+, plus and weapon skill 4+, plus, which is important for that stratagem earlier that we talked about on the bodyguards, where they get to reroll to hit into wound rolls. Yep. So taking a full unit with that, pretty awesome, actually. That seems that actually seems really strong. Yep. Then you have Furious Assault. Um, use this in your charge phase when a jetpack unit finishes a charge move for each model in the unit. You can select an enemy unit within one inch and roll one d six. On a three plus, they take a mortal wound. That's that's better than I've seen other of this type of stratagem. Sure. It's, isn't it usually like on a six plus or you know like a four plus or a five three plus? plus is a three plus is. Great. So this reminds me of the picture that they have of the crisis suit, like coming down on the space marine's head with his foot. Mm -hmm. Like that's what it. I think that's and I think that's super cool. Um, this is great for a big unit of crisis suits because you could take like nine crisis suits in a unit and then charge somebody, and then you're doing mortals on three, so you're probably doing six mortal wounds to them with crisis suits. Oof. I think that's. Good. I mean, that's mm -hmm. that's an awesome. That's a, that's awesome danger. Or awesome, awesome damage, I think. Uh, <laughs> so it's an awesome danger. It's awesome, awesome danger. Awesome perspective. Danger, awesome, danger. Awesome danger was John's nickname. <laughs> um, then you have danger close. This is for a breacher team or strike team. Um, and uh, you can reroll to wound rolls within 12 inches. So this combos up good with aggressive footing, um, wherein you're getting uh, re at least reroll ones to hit for your marker lights. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. This lets you reroll all your to wound rolls. So potentially, because you can put... I think you can put 40 shots out of a unit of Fire Warriors if they uh, have the... No, it's 30 shots. Uh, if they're wi within, if they're close to a uh, uh, Fire Sight or the... Uh, what are those guys? Uh, Cadre Fire Blade. I'm going to be honest. Guys. I don't play Tau. Like, it's, sorry, it's been a while since I've talked about Tau. So, uh, this, yeah, I think that's cool. Um, that's a lot of shots. That's yeah. a lot of shots re-rolling to wound rolls at Strength 5. Uh, not uh, bad. No, that's good, actually. Um, then you have defense in numbers. Um, so use this in your fight phase or your sh or your opponent shooting phase. Um, when a unit of crisis suit battle suits or bodyguards are chosen as an attack, they get a five up feeling of pain. Awesome. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, Focus fury. You can t you have a character and he's shooting. Uh, you can reroll two and rolls with that character. Amazing with the amount of commanders that are already coming in uh, for uh, the enclaves. This is also kind of cool for the eight because they have a character Riptide oh. that you could use this on. <laughs> Good lord. Yeah, so that's kind of cool. 
Uh, and then this one is really interesting, right? Okay, so it's called Firestorm. Uh, you pick up to three units with a fire battlefield roll, and it costs one extra command point for each extra selected unit. Um, or this stratagem costs one additional command point for each selected unit. So if you if you pick three uh, flyers, it's going to cost four. Right? Yep. Yep. Uh, That's how I read it. Yeah, I, I read it that way as well. Anyway, um, so <laughs> when you use this, every enemy unit within three inches on a four plus takes D3 mortal wounds. So the flyers don't have to be close together. You don't have to have three of them. You can just nuke your opponent's army with a bunch of mortal wounds, especially if they have characters close by. Like, so you can, fl like, you can fly behind their lines next to their characters. Or if you have the bombers, you can fly over them, drop bombs, and then use this. Good lord. Like all the mortal <laughs> wounds. So that's pretty fun. I think it would probably be FAQ to be like three CP max. Yeah, yeah, that'd be fun. So yeah, because yeah, you're. So, I think that's what you they have mean to, by it. Yeah, because yeah, you have to select one to right. start with when you when you activate. Right, it. right. Um, all right. So the mirror codex. So the, these are all oh, these are relics. The, all, these are the relic specific, and there's three warlord traits, so three of each. Okay. Uh, mirror codex. When resolving an attack made by a model with this relic against a unit within 18 inches, you can re-roll the hit roll. Kind of cool. So yep. uh, if you're shooting at something with a lot of negatives, like a Stormhawk Interceptor or something like that with a commander, where you're normally hitting on yeah, fours, you just get to reroll misses. Nice. Pretty good. Yeah. Uh, then you have Talisman. And then so you can pop, you can use this, and then also use uh, the Stratagem to reroll to wound rolls, so you get to hit and to wound for a character. That's pretty cool. Uh, then you have Talisman of Arthas Morlock. Uh, so this gives you a five up invulnerable save and lets you deny a power. Which is great because Howard had no way of no doing way this doing previously. It. So that's, this is yeah, this awesome. is something new that they have. The, that is probably going to definitely see play. I think so. I mean, and then, so oh, it's a chaos no, star. It is. That's <laughs> it's, I think it's either chaos or necron. A hexagrammatic talisman is what it's called. Yeah. So uh, this was a weird world that seemed like it because this is where Farsight got a sword from. So I think it might be necron, mm -hmm. but it could be chaos. Who knows? Um, because uh, because Necrons have a very similar rule with the Gloom Prism, where they get to deny a psychic power as well. But it's not a hexagrammatic Gloom. You don't know that it's not. That's fair. Uh, so, Seismic Fibulary Node. Um, so this one is once per battle during your opponent's, your opponent's turn, you can choose to activate this. Until the end of the turn, when a model starts or ends its move within 6 inches, roll a d6 on a one that the model's unit takes one mortal wound. So the way I see this... You charge into like the middle of your opponent's lines with like a uh, like a crisis commander into a unit that you know he's not going to die against, and then any model that moves around him, like any unit, is going to maybe take some mortal wounds. I think that's. I mean, it's interesting. It's not mm -hmm. great or anything, but it's. I can see you can do some play with that. Well, because even if they fall back, they're going to take mortal wounds. So it, it's only on a one. Yep. Right. So they they roll, but every model. Within six. Oh, so if you every model. So okay. if like so if they have like thirty orc boys and like ten of them are within range, they're rolling ten dice. That kind of thing. gotcha, gotcha. No, that Granted, makes, if that you makes charge sense. thirty orc Sorry. boys, you're probably gonna He's... die. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's gonna land on that top level of that right. ruin. Yeah, right. Uh, then you've got uh, for warlord traits, you've got bloody through war. This one's cool. So uh, the bonding knife rule uh, within twelve inches, you automatically pass on a four plus instead of a six. So regardless of how many casualties you take for uh, uh, for how the bonding knife ritual normally works, if you roll a six on your morale test, you automatically pass. You don't lose any guys. Now it's a four. Pretty good. Be a four fearless. Not hmm. bad. Yeah. No, that's solid. Uh, then you've got aggressive tactician, uh, commander only. When this warlord declares Matka, it affects far side enclave units within twelve instead of six. So this lets you advance uh, without counting this having moved at all. So you can advance and shoot heavy weapons and everything else, but you get a 12-inch aura instead of 6. Pretty good. And then finally you have Master of the Killing Blow. If you're attacking a character, you get to reroll the hit roll. Pretty good. And so that's in combat as well. So this one with the fusion blades, kind of cool. Yeah. And they have some tactical objectives as well. So that kind of goes over uh, the Tau portion of the Codex. Yeah. Uh, what do you guys your... think overall? Uh, I, I mean, I when I say I don't play Tau, we don't have a lot of Tau players up here. Most of them shelved their Tau in favor of other armies. Sure. Uh, that they just got tired of, of messing around with stuff. Mm -hmm. But so I don't have a lot of experience with playing against Tau. Mm -hmm. um, overall, it seems like a huge improvement from where they were. Yeah, 
Uh, I think I think that's absolutely true. Yeah, it just it feels super strong uh, and very fluffy in place to what I know of Tau. I think there's a lot of fun new options for this. Yeah. For this so I, I play against Tau pretty frequently. Okay. Um, and I think kind of going into this. If I was going up against a Tau army pre Psychic Awakening, I know what I'm going to be playing against pretty sure. much, right? So it's pretty standard builds going yeah, uh, going that's about. Um, this supplement gives some options. I think so. Um, I don't think I'm going to see huge changes to sort of the meta Tau lists, but that's Crisis Suit Squad coming. Uh, yeah, that's going to be one of maybe five or six different things it can do now. Right. As opposed to that one or two things it was doing before. Yeah. Um, that Riptide that was there, is that going to have a different gun this time? Right. I mean, the model's not going to because everyone's glued that into place. But <laughs> <laughs> I see a lot of options for, for how to make that list better. I see a lot of dice mitigation. I see like a lot of ways... To make um, dice no matter, is your BS 4 plus? Doesn't matter. I have 15 different ways to add marker lights to you right. that don't yeah. care about Or don't even skill. have to roll to hit. Right. Or don't exactly. even have to roll to exactly. hit. So I see this is where it's coming from, and this is where Tau is kind of evolving for. You're not going to get army-wide uh, three up for your, your suits and things like that. That's right. just not going to happen. But right. this book is giving you a way to mitigate that, to not care about that. So you can do the, the stratagem to get... Uh, the for two CP to get that makes your battle suits three up. Mm -hmm. You can you can get the elite unit with far side enclaves that gets you a three up. Mm -hmm. You can get uh, uh, let's see what else. Um, there's the stratagem from far side enclaves from the main tab book mm -hmm. that gives you a plus one to hit. Right, you know the deep strike. So there's a bunch of different ways that you can get the three up to so, to get it up there. So there's a lot of different options. There's a lot of different play. I don't think your main tile lists are going to see differences. Sure. I think your meta building lists, we're going to see some big changes and yeah. some big adjustments from yeah. this book. But it's going to take a while to get there. Um, but this book makes Tau play how Tau should play. I think um, yeah. I think there's a lot more play for suits. There's a lot more play for suits. Um, breachers really come yeah. into their own. Yeah. I want to see them um, on the table more. I mean, man. if you combo some of the far side ones with some of the, like, you're re-rolling hits, you're doing 15 inches, that strength six is killer. Yep. Turning it yeah. into pistol weapons. Yeah. yeah. So, like, like for me, I'm just like, I mean, I'm not the greatest player, but heroically intervening crew to tie up a unit which you then charge with breachers or, or that have charged breachers, and then you pistol them and right. they can't do anything back because they're all tied up. It's just a lot of different things you can do with this. And like I said, I think this is one of the strongest non-marine psychic awakenings yet. Yeah, I agree with that. Well, with that. and there's there's a serious trend that I'm noticing, and, and that is that when the Marine 2.0 Codex came out, everybody got moved from AP-1 to AP-2 on if you were a Marine player. And I'm seeing a lot of ways in each one of these as they come out to negate that sort of thing. To help to mitigate it. Yeah, yeah, to mitigate it. So the biggest complaint people have against playing against Marines is the high AP stuff is getting washed sure. by, by stuff. It we're doesn't wash out the rerolls, but no, no, it's still pretty good. No, yeah. but I mean... You we're know, seeing slight meta adjustments as yeah, it goes. Shifts. I, I really like the way that it feels like they're trying to balance stuff yeah. without going heavy-handed. Yeah. I can't wait to see like the state of the meta once all of these get released for all the different armies, because it's going to be totally different, I think. Yeah, and I can't wait to see the Astra Militarum section that's next. Oh, yeah. Oh, damn, look at that segue, son. Well, um, if you enjoyed our review... Uh, please subscribe to our YouTube page um, where I we did. are doing. Oh, I am. Oh, good. Yeah. Good for you, Dave. Yeah. Thanks. Um, but for our listeners, oh. uh, if you want to, highly recommend it. Uh, you can get a chance to check out our different Codex reviews, um, listen to our podcast uh, wherever uh, so many good podcasts are found. Well, that's not true. Just yeah. wherever bad podcasts yeah. are, are wherever found. Wherever bad. Yep. So libs in. Yeah. Yep. Um, <laughs> and on iTunes. Oh, and also Podbean iTunes. And yep. uh, what, Stitcher? Yeah, we're yeah. pretty much everywhere podcasts can be found. Oh, and iHeartMedia as well. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, I, I got us out there. Uh, Take care. Pretty well. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, subscribe on YouTube. Yeah, um, if you want to talk to Danny about this book here before it takes out, uh, he's available on our, our Patreon. It's patreon.com forward slash mob rules. Uh, just a simple $1, that's it, donation will get you permanent access to Discord and therefore Danny. Yep. So we're, we're whoring you out for a dollar. <laughs> oh, no, that will be really <laughs> That's okay. That word is clean. Oh, good. Good. All right. So this has been the conclusion of Danny's hot takes on the Tau rules from Psychic Awakening the Greater Good. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, listen to our other reviews on the Astro Tau rules and the GCO Tau rules. Yeah.